While reworking the induction for the 363 and the Eaton Blown LTDLX, I needed to come up with a way to check changes in flow. It just wasn't practical to drive three hours round trip and pay a hundred bucks to reflow the system as I was making small changes. Here you can see the induction and get an idea of just how drastic the changes to the manifold were. I cut out 11 pounds of aluminum and 5 inches of runner out of the intake, as well as greatly increased the size of the runners. When all was said and done, the thing got welded back together. I was curious to see just what kind of flow distribution I was getting, and it made the most sense to use the blower to blow air through the thing because that's how it is on the engine. So I bought this $12 anemometer off of eBay, flipped the whole induction upside down, screwed a bolt into the blower snout and chucked a drill to the bolt. Then I measured the airspeed out of each of the ports. The data showed that the distribution was really poor. I thought about it and realized that under real world circumstances with the blower spinning 30 times faster, the differential was probably not as great as these numbers indicated. The airspeed in the manifold while the engine is actually running is hundreds of miles per hour. Here I was getting between 4 and 18 miles per hour, which makes this test great for tracking small changes. As you can see, there was a 21% spread from the average airspeed of 11.2 miles an hour. Clearly, there was room for improvement. The first thing I did was mock up a divider out of cardstock in the discharge of the blower, then I ran the test again. This time there was only a 9.5% spread from average but I also noted a 7% decrease in overall flow. Considering that I have plans to inject something into the airstream at that point, I decided a divider wasn't going to work. The loss of flow cemented the deal. So I turned to the upper intake manifold. I noticed that, not surprisingly, the front cylinders were lowest in flow, but somewhat surprisingly, the frontmost cylinder was actually flowing quite well. It was the two behind it that were the worst, numbers two and five. Looking into the upper manifold, I noticed that one of the two bolt bosses, the one closest to the inlet, was lined up directly with cylinders 2 and 5. So I cut down the side that was blocking the flow more, and then I also did a chatter cut on the radius on the opening of the upper intake manifold, but on the front side only, to create a boundary layer and help air stick to the radius more, hopefully moving more air to the front. I also did a little more work to the lower runners 2 and 5, but the lower was already ported to death, so there wasn't much left to do there. Then I ran the test again without the divider, but with the port work. And look at the improvement, a 16.5% deviation from average. While worse than with the divider, still an improvement of almost 5% over the baseline, and we also gained a little bit in flow, which is much better than losing it. Again, looking into the upper, I decided to do both sides of the bolt boss and lower the floor to the front of the boss to encourage the air to go that way. You can see that the floor is lower to the right of the boss than it is to the left. Then I re-ran the test again. Looking at the data, again there was an improvement, though smaller this time. We gained a hair more flow and improved the distribution by another percentage point. So that's where I left it. The only thing left to do was to refinish the upper and turn my attentions to the heads. Hope this gives you some ideas on how to check your own induction.